Hello again and welcome to class. This video is the start of a new series called Audiogram of the Day, where I'll complete a new random audiogram using the class program and post it for you all to watch. If you like this content and want to see more, please hit subscribe to support the channel. All right, here we go. Click on the audiogram designer. We're just going to make a completely random audiogram and we'll start practice. And I, I could cheat to show the true audiogram, but then that wouldn't be very fun. So let's watch. I have no idea if the right ear is better, left ear is better. Uh, we're just going to do the testing. So we'll present at a level that they should probably respond to. And we're going down in 10 dB steps to follow the modified Houston Westlake procedure. When they stop responding, go up in 5 dB steps, double check the threshold and find it. I'm going to go up just by 10 from that threshold since adjacent frequency should be pretty similar. I'll just confirm that threshold a couple times. The program settings require testing at 3 and 6K. So that's why I'm testing 3, even though there's not a big difference between the thresholds. And if you don't like that, you can toggle that setting off if you'd like. We're going to have some pretty normal hearing in the right ear. Right. Now, lots of people will go back and double check 1000 hertz, and I'm just not going to do that because I feel pretty confident in the computer simulation. All right, so we cruise through air conduction in that year. Let's go back to 1000 hertz. We're going to start at 50 since I don't really know what the difference is going to be between the ears. Okay, so we've got a little bit of something going on, on the left. Threshold, do some 3K testing. Now I'm already starting to notice that this uh, left ear is looking suspiciously similar to the right ear. And uh, so this is something called a shadow audiogram or a shadow curve, where your thresholds uh, almost exactly mimic the non test ear. You can kind of get the idea that maybe you're presenting the sound loud enough in the uh, test ear that it's not really being heard by the test ear, but it's loud enough that it's crossing over to the non test ear. And I think that's what's happening here, just based on how um, similar the thresholds here are looking. Okay. So at this point, I need to kind of assess where I'm at and see if there might be an issue of crossover hearing. And so I'll overlay the audiograms to see, and there's a pretty big gap between here. And really, there's a concern for air conduction masking being needed when the air conduction threshold is greater than the bone conduction threshold of the non-test ear plus the interaural attenuation. So in this case, the interaural attenuation is 40. I'm using TDH50 uh, earphones, since that's a pretty standard occlusion or interaural attenuation value. And so if any of these thresholds are, um, are 40 dB higher than the bone conduction threshold of that ear, then we'll, we'll need to do some masking. So at this point, I see there's quite a few that are at you know, 35 dB away. So these uh, thresholds are 30 dB away in the low frequencies, we're 35 dB away in the mid frequencies, and um, you know, 35 away here. There's, there's 40. We, we should definitely uh, do air conduction masking here at 6K because the air, the left threshold is um, greater than or equal to the opposite ear threshold plus the internal attenuation value. Uh, but I'm su going to suspect that some of the bone conduction thresholds might be a little bit better in this in this right ear. So let's go ahead and do the bone conduction testing. And in real life, this would be a huge pain because you would switch to the bone transducer and then have to switch back to do masking. But since we're using a simulator, let's go ahead and do the bone and then we can switch back to air conduction masking and do all of the air conduction masking at the same time. So we'll switch to a bone transducer. We'll resplit this out, make it easy to see which ear we're testing in. And we'll start in our better hearing ear 
at uh, 1000 Hertz. So I'll just go a little bit above the air conduction threshold since those thresholds should line up fairly nicely and look at that. So now our bone conduction threshold is a little bit better. And so when we make that comparison of the air conduction thresholds in the left ear to the bone conduction of the right, we're gonna get that 40 dB gap. And do well we don't usually do bone conduction testing at 6000 so i'll just go down here and find it at 500 and so i'm just going to save over these thresholds because the theoretical interaural attenuation should be zero and so right away here we see a couple things so let's overlay this audiogram again we see that there's an air bone gap in the left ear. So we're gonna to need to cover up the right ear to make sure that these bone conduction thresholds in the left ear um, are true thresholds and not just a response from the right ear. And also we see that the air conduction thresholds may have been responses from the right ear as well. So we're gonna to need to cover up the right ear. We'll put some masking noise in that ear and um, then we will find the true air conduction thresholds and then we'll find the true bone conduction thresholds in the left ear and then we'll be done so we'll split this back out we'll turn on some masking make sure we're doing air conduction testing in the left ear we'll set the master level to the non-test ear air conduction threshold plus 10 and our presentation level at the priorly obtained priorly i'm not sure that's a word but the um, previously obtained threshold and then we'll present no response, so we're covering up the threshold that was not the true threshold. We'll go up by five until we get a response. And then we'll increase our masking. And we just created a plateau. So that's our true air conduction threshold. So let's do the same thing, non-test ear threshold, 10 dB safety factor, present, 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 until we get a presentation. Then we're gonna And present until we get our presentation and then we'll increase the master no response so we increase the presentation level until we get a plateau of responses okay so we got a, a nice sloping box here and so we'll go back down master in the non-test plus 10 EV safety factor and then we'll just go up until we get a response we'll do this little dance between the master and the stimulus presentation level so we get our plateau the plateau is just where you raise the master level several times but it doesn't affect the response it doesn't recover up the response and that's how we know we're getting the true threshold DB safety factor. already knew that we had to test 6k because of this 40 dB difference here and so we'll go up 10 I know some people are going to say you're going the snail mail way, but I, I am trying to illustrate here that you know that um, there are shortcuts you can do to go up a little bit faster, but ultimately I'm just trying to show good technique and do an audiogram a day. 
and I'll probably get faster and better at this as I go along too. Okay, so now let's just go ahead and check these lower frequencies. So with masking, we're actually at the right level there. We got our plateau. And uh, masking isn't necessary here, but we might as well. Sure. Okay, so I don't think we needed it there, but we'll go ahead and save it. So now what we're looking at is this air bone gap in the left ear. We have this big sloping air conduction loss, but we want to make sure that the bone conduction uh, lines up with that, or there might be some some odd reason why there's a, a massive discrepancy between the air and bone, uh, or there might be a mixed loss where the there's some sensory neural loss and a conductive high frequency component. So we're just going to need to sort this all out. So um, let's do some bone conduction masking. We'll switch our transducer to bone conduction. This presentation level will be the previously obtained threshold. And a little bit different for bone conduction masking, we'll start at the air conduction of the non-test ear plus a 10 dB safety factor plus accounting for the occlusion effect, which using super aural earphones is 10 dB at 1000 Hertz for this program. And so we'll add 10 dB to cover up the occlusion effect. And then we'll increase the level until we get a presentation and we'll do the same plateau method. nice plateau there and so now let's go do some some other frequencies so there's no occlusion effect at 2000 so we just need our 10 db safety factor our starting presentation and i am going to cheat i'm going to go up 15 no response 15 response 15 15 15 15. And then now that I'm closer to where I think the threshold is going to be, I'll go a little bit slower. So now I'll go five at a time until I get that plateau. Three more. We're in the home stretch. My safety factor. And I'll do the same thing here. I'll go up 15, up 15, up 15, up 15, up 15, up 15. And then we'll just do small increments from here. So now I can't go higher than this. I'm at the limits of the audiometer. And so I'll save this with an N button or this little button here as a no response. And then um, I can already kind of assume that that's what's going to happen over here. So I'll just leave masking on with an appropriate amount of masking in there and see if we get any response here. We do. Not a masking in there and no response there. So that was kind of nice. We've got one more level to test. The occlusion effect at 500 is 20, so we'll put in 20 for that occlusion effect and a 10 dB safety factor. And then we'll present, we'll go until we get a response, increase the masker. And I'm already pretty close to what I think the threshold should be, so I'm just going to go up in the 5 dB steps here. Okay. There we go, we did it. So we'll turn off masking so the virtual patient isn't listening to that. Let's overlay the true audiogram to see how well I did. All right, so yeah, I, we nailed it in the right ear. In the left ear, a couple things here I said, you know, we probably didn't have to mask, but uh, decided to do that anyway, just to be safe since we masked everything. So it, it said that I should have used unmasked thresholds there, and you know, that's fine. Um, we, we talked about that. The other thing that it caught that I didn't even think about is we have a steep enough slope here between 1000 and 2000 Hertz, when there's a 20 dB gap between adjacent frequencies, we should really test the uh, interoctive frequency between there. So 
what I did wrong this time and a, a lesson for us all for, for this audiogram of the day is that if the frequencies uh, air conduction or if the adjacent air conduction thresholds are more than greater than or equal to 20 dB apart, you need to test the inter octave. And uh, yeah, that's just something that I, I spaced on this audiogram. If you want to learn more about masking, feel free to watch a masking tutorial video on the channel in the card linked here. And don't forget to hit subscribe. Thanks. See you next time.